Welcome to the Brad and Taylor Show. Today we have Gogo Bethke. You're listening to the Brad and Taylor Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs to pursue their passions. We're sitting down with some of the best to learn how they got started and some lessons they learned along the way. Hey, how's it going? Hey guys, thank you for having me. Yep, of course. Yep. So what exactly do you do? Oh, this thing called real estate. Actually, I'm joking there. I usually tell people I make people homeless. <laughs> and I'm really good at it. And they pay me a lot of money to do just that. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So when you were, uh, when you were younger, is, did you want to get into real estate or what was your whole plan? <laughs> I love that question because I, I still don't know what I'm going to be when I grow up. <laughs> um, I'm still clearly not grown up. So I've never had that personality of like, ooh, I'm going to be a ballerina or a vet or a pilot or a nurse. Like I never yeah. knew what I'm going to be. I also have the tendency, I get very excited about things. I figure it out, then I'm over it and I move on to the next exciting thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so the reason I love, I guess, real estate is because two days are never the same. I'm mm-hmm. never talking to the same people. It's not the same transaction. It's not the same house I'm selling. It's not the same parties and the agreement. It's never the same day. Um, so if I had to have a job that was like monotone and same desk, same data entry or something day after day, same people, I'd probably shoot myself. In the foot. <laughs> You're like, no, <laughs> um, it's just not me. You know what I mean? But with real estate, it's different every day. So I can never get sick of it. And yeah. I learn um, to me, it's very important to feed my brain. Um, I like to grow and I like the chase of like, Ooh, what else can I, you know, if I know this, then what else can I learn? And oh, yeah. um Real estate is always provides you that platform of like, you're never smart enough in a transaction. There's always <laughs> with, with every transaction, something new pops up that you're like, oh, shoot, I've never had that before. Right? So yeah. I just love it because I can't get sick of it. So I've been in it now for 11 years and I That's guess awesome. I'm here to stay. I like it. I like it. So is there any other uh, any other jobs you did right before uh, you became an agent? How'd you, how was, how'd you decide you wanted to be an agent? How'd that come across? Um, I actually, it's not my idea. <laughs> I'm an <accidental laughs> agent. Uh, my neighbor is the uh, marketing director for Capital Title, actually mm-hmm. a Michigan-based uh, title company. And she thought with my social media and my bubbly personality, then I can get along with anyone, that I would make a great realtor. I was a stay-at-home mom at the time. Prior to that, I did everything. I did data entry. I did um, worked in a warehouse. I, I was front desk. I was a server. Uh, I worked in the uh, plastics department. I was a restaurant food safety auditor. Um, you name it. I have all kinds <laughs> of weird certifications. I worked in a jewelry store. I was one of their top sales reps. So I, I pretty much did the process of elimination, what I don't want to do when I grew up <laughs> kind of <laughs> kind of scenario so uh it wasn't like oh when I grow up I'm gonna be a realtor it wasn't even you know my idea but it just fell on my lap and I became really good at it I truly enjoy what I get to do now day in and day out and here we are awesome I like it so tell us about your uh tell us about your first transaction how'd that go <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was, I was on the buy side and I had a younger couple and I showed them a couple houses and, and then I showed them this one and, and, and they were like, oh my gosh, we love it. Let's make an offer. <laughs> and I was like, what a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> how do I, how do I, supposedly I'm the realtor here. How do I do that? <laughs> So it was like seven o'clock, seven thirty at night. It was getting dark out. I'm like, who am I gonna call? It was a Sunday night, and I'm who am I gonna call? Who's gonna help me on a Sunday night to make an offer? I was like, I don't even know how to get back to the office. Uh, <laughs> I had no clue how to make an offer. I didn't even know what paperwork we needed. Like I literally had zero clue. I called everybody <laughs> that I had saved in my phone, and I had their phone number. And whoever is going to answer from the broker, the associate broker, the front desk person, every agent that I met in the office to be like, who's gonna help me make this offer? And I did it. And they got accepted and that was the first. Awesome. Nice. Hey, it probably worked out a whole lot easier back then than now, huh? To get that oh, accepted. God. Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, with all the with eleven years of knowledge and all the tricks in the book, it's we still miss a couple offers here and there. I mean, I have yeah. very good relationships and you know, some tricks up to my slave. So we win quite a few of them, but in the same time we lose a few. Imagine if you were a brand new agent right now trying, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> trying to take a winning bid. Yeah, especially if you're on the buyer side, it's like, oh, ooh, what am I going to do now? And I got to do this for a living? <laughs> Even on the listing side, if you are brand new and now suddenly within 24 hours you have 52 offers, like <laughs> how do you even know which one is the best offer? I know. Hey, but you have all the money sitting right there waiting for you. Which one are you going to pick? Which one are you going to pick? <laughs> yeah, but sometimes that's why we say best and highest because sometimes the highest is not best. Yep. Sometimes the terms override the price. You know, if you're giving me the highest price, but you're not removing the appraisal contingency, then your offer is as good as someone at full price or someone at market value. Yeah. You're not. So 
Um, and you just kind of have to understand the game. Yeah, Even for sure. Like, there's a lot of tricks. Yeah, for sure. So tell us a little bit kind of right now, like you said, you kind of got a, a team of people. Do you got an assistant and, and stuff like that? Tell us a little oh, bit God. about your team. <laughs> <laughs> My assistant has assistants. Um, <laughs> but I remember reading a quote one day of like, you know, you made it when your assistant has an assistant. <laughs> and so I'm just getting to that point of like, oh my gosh, my assistant has two assistants. <laughs> um, my assistant is not an assistant anymore. Uh, that's how she started out. She's our everything doer, team leader, office manager, slash everybody reports to her because I scare people on a day-to-day <laughs> basis. So she's a buffer. Um, so what do we have? Well, I own multiple businesses. So I start on the real estate side and then mm-hmm. I walk you through everything else okay. we do. So on the real estate side, uh, I am a licensed agent in the, state, in the state of Michigan, just where you guys are, just figured out we are an hour from each other. Um, <laughs> we have a team that's called Google's Real Estate Team and our that's our local team. So on our local team, we have four agents, myself, mm-hmm. my husband, Christy, my right-hand girl, and then um, our listing and buyer's specialist Clancy. So that's just um, a smaller team. She does all of the transactions that I organically generate. I do not do transactions anymore. I am here for the negotiation part of the deal and the marketing part of the deal, but I don't go to appointments anymore. I don't show houses. I don't do any of the legwork. Um, So that's our local team. Then I switched my business over to a brokerage called eXp back in 2018. eXp allows us to grow a nationwide and international team. So that's what's called Team GoGo. On that team, we have over 500 agents um, in pretty much every state in the US and then um, in five different countries. So we have agents in Colombia, in France, in United States, in Canada, <laughs> in England, and there's one more. We just got an agent somewhere. Mexico. So nice. six. Exactly That's awesome. Countries. Yeah, and we are growing. We grew 360% last year. Wow. Nice. 360% last year. So that's that's on the uh, international side of um, my real estate business. So now I mostly coach and train um, and mentor other agents how to get yeah, what they want. do the same thing. If, if I've been there, yeah, do the same thing. Or some of them want to have a mega icon team. I never wanted to have a mega icon team. So if that's what they want to do, then I have my connections. I wouldn't be the one training them, but I would be recommending them to my connections in the industry to, to learn from the absolute best. Um, what else? So then I have a coaching business and a, in a social media training business, it's called Google's Bootcamp. Um, it's two different um, courses that we teach. One is on the social media side where I teach other realtors how to build a brand, how to lead generate with that brand organically where they mm-hmm. don't ever have to buy a lead. I never bought a lead in my life and I've done over God knows 80 million probably um, in production. Um, so that's on the social media side and that's, a, that's a, a course that anybody can go and buy. It's a video based series. They log in on their own time. There's hundreds and hundreds of videos teaching you everything from the basics of social media all the way up to how to do Zapier integration and how to build a team and make passive income and affiliates and all of those things. And then we have another that's called an agent attraction bootcamp, which is how to build a team. Um, And that is towards um, team leaders and uh, brokerages that are attracting agents to their own teams or brokerages. So that's a different video-based series as well, where they can log in and watch everything of how I built a team over 500 agents uh, internationally and and all the tricks and all the systems and apps and VAs and you name it, everything you possibly need to have it run like a well-oiled machine and um just as we came on i shared with you guys and i and i think i can share here too uh we just officially got our very first two comma club award uh, which means my course is built on um click funnels and click funnels gives out a what's called a two comma club award for um any funnel that has generated over a million dollars in revenue and uh we just that's awesome time. That's awesome. Good That's for so you. Exciting. <laughs> that Thank is you. awesome. Thank you. So it's. I mean, I'm on cloud nine 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 nine. Freaking amazing. Granted, I work like a mad woman, so don't don't let me fool you. You should see my calendar. It's it's madness, but I get to do what I love. Yep. And we get paid for it and we're helping others in the making and, and growing. So if, I mean, and I just, I could go on. Yep. <laughs> for sure. So when you, when did you decide to add it on an assistant? So tell us about that kind of, let's say, let's say someone's starting out and they're kind of yeah. getting traction, they're getting going. How did you determine you needed an assistant? When, when did, uh, when did you decide that? So I had a coach, um, then I was paying a thousand dollars an hour. And, um, and I'm a mom, so I can multitask. <laughs> so I'm doing a load of laundry while I'm talking, while I'm having a thousand dollar phone call. <laughs> and my coach says, what are you doing? And I'm like, running a load of laundry. And she goes, well, that's a very expensive load of laundry. <laughs> I'm like, what? 
I'm like, what? I, I can multitask. Here I am thinking. <laughs> I got this. I got this. Do a load of laundry. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm a mom. And then she, the way she explained it, she was like, okay, tell me this. What's your average commission? I'm like, 9,000 at a time. She goes, how many hours do you work on a file with a client? I said, probably 10. So she says, okay, that's 900 bucks an hour. So you're telling me that that load of laundry that you are running, it's worth $900. That's a $900 load of laundry because if you took that hour and you went and talked to another seller or another buyer and, and generated yourself an average commission. Yep. So here I am thinking I'm saving myself 20 bucks because why would I pay 20 <laughs> bucks to someone to come run a load of laundry while I can talk on the phone and run a load of laundry. But instead I was losing $880 an hour by not doing the money-making activity versus doing an activity because I can. Yep. Of course I can freaking run a load of laundry. I can do anything <laughs> I set my mind to. Is it the best way of spending my time? And that's what opened my eyes. So from that moment on, I haven't done paperwork. I haven't done paperwork. That was my very first hire is an assistant and a transaction coordinator. She was doing both at the time. Um, and that was probably my fifth or sixth year of my career. So about six years ago, awesome. six, seven years ago, um, never looked back. I have not done paperwork since. If you don't have an assistant, you are the assistant. If you don't have a <laughs> transaction coordinator, you are the transaction coordinator. Yep. So I am way better off going and doing the hourly activities that has the highest ROI. Yep. And, um, and so that's how it started. So look at it that way. It's not that you cannot run a load of laundry. It's not that you cannot walk your dog. It's not that I can't do dishes or cook a grocery shop, but is it best for me to go spend two hours in the grocery store or should I be prospect or should I be doing something that's the money-making activity and pay someone 20 bucks an hour to go grocery shop for me, 25, 30, whatever yep. the local hourly rate is for someone for a personal assistant. So yep. I have, um, I have my, my, uh, virtual, but executive assistant from Brazil, her name is Mariana. And I have, I don't read emails. I don't read messages. I don't, I mean, the list of things I don't actually, the list of things I do do is much uh, shorter yeah, <laughs> than I don't do so anymore. So Mariana does everything from my schedule to respond to my email, to my LinkedIn. The only one I personally respond to is Instagram. On every other account, we have virtual assistants. Um, I don't do paperwork on the real estate side of things. I couldn't tell you the last time I wrote a purchase agreement. Um, I don't have to do that anymore. We have teams in places and we have buyers, buyers agents and listing agents. Um, Pretty much anything I need from laundry <laughs> all the way to the <laughs> highest thing in um, either one of my businesses, we have multiple virtual assistants. And for our team GoGo organization, we have um, Said, he's from, um, gosh, uh, Pakistan. I can't think of there it. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. he's amazing at running numbers. So on the team side of things, we run a lot of trackers. I like, I'm a numbers nerd. Um, I know I look like a little blonde, girly little thing, but I'm a huge nerd in the end of the day. Like I love numbers. I love books. I love tracking things. If you don't track it, you can grow it. Um, so all of those, they say it, it takes a village to raise a family. Yeah. It definitely takes multiple villages to run multiple businesses. And on the Gogo's Bootcamp side, we have probably 17, um, maybe not 17, but definitely over 10, 12, 13, 14, um, virtual, um, not assistance, but just the different categories for people, but pretty much yeah. everybody virtual. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about your, uh, your training, your training you got going on, your training programs you have. Yes. Actually, if you don't mind, give me one second. Cause someone's ringing my doorbell and yeah, no problem but it's going to let them in. So let me see if I need to let them in or if it's just a mailman and I might have to excuse myself yep i have to let him in i'll be right up right okay, here. Sounds good. so sorry i don't know why i just ran upstairs because i have a button on my phone where i could have actually opened it <laughs> It's what Halfway it is. Up, it's okay. Like, why didn't I just use the button? <laughs> <laughs> That's how it was. Okay, continue. So That's my awesome. courses, you asked me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell us about, tell us a little more in depth on those. How did you decide to do them? And then uh, tell us a little bit about more about each one. Yeah, so we started Gogo's Bootcamp, the social media training um, last year, springtime. So we are going on two years now. And initially that got... <laughs> 
started because I would go to events and teach other realtors. Like I do a lot of public speaking or a lot of podcasts and things like that. And, and agents would ask me the same question over and over and over again. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like a parrot. <laughs> and then in events, it got to the point where I was like, did I already say that? Because I would do multiple, maybe podcasts a day, multiple events in a day. And I was like, I don't, I can't remember if I already said that, not said that. Right. So um, instead of having to repeat myself, I figured I'm just going to record myself yeah. and just shoot you know, shoot out the videos on every subject. So that's pretty much how the social media course started. It's, it, I started very, very basic. It's literally explained that the basics of social media and why you are doing things. Um, and also I do things very differently. Like, like from day one, I was very um, brand centric, meaning that I am my brand. And that's what I teach for other realtors because we don't sell real estate. We sell ourselves and our services. And it's hard for some agents to get in front of the camera or understand why they're doing that. They're posting the newest listing, the open houses they're going to have, and you know all of closing pictures with their clients, but they don't really get allow people to get to know them. And the reason I don't have a listing presentation, I never had to have one, is because people know that they want to work with me before I ever even stepped a foot in on the door. Yeah. The reason they know they want to work with me is because I allowed them to get to know me. They get to see my hustle and my work ethic and my personality. They get to fall in love with me so sad in the fact that they're like, she's kind of she's a cool chick i would love to work with her <laughs> so they know they want to work with me before i even step a foot in the door so my goal is to teach other realtors to do that so we start at the very very basics of understanding the foundation of fundamentals of social media and the different platforms and how you fit in like for example if i'm on the beach in my bathing suit and my tadas are hanging out and i'm holding a cocktail that doesn't go on linkedin that goes on Instagram and it's fine on Instagram, but it's not fine on LinkedIn. And it's kind of borderline on a business Facebook page. So when you understand all of these different platforms and how your profile fits either one of them, I'm not saying don't do LinkedIn. I do LinkedIn, but that's where my most professional self shows up is right. LinkedIn. In the middle is Facebook, Instagram, anything. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah. In, in there, we'll teach absolutely everything from the basics. Then we go on to um, pretty much a 10 week series of anything from the basics of social media, then going on to buy side of the transactions, listing side of the transactions, open houses, and all of the different ways how you can generate um, leads with, with social media. Then we go into team building, then we go into passive income, then we go into I mean, there was three different weeks um, added on. I think it was a 10 or 12 week series. So um, then there's a whole my, uh, series on mindset. So I believe 99% of your success is these six inches between your ears, the thoughts that you have, the belief system, yep. whatever you believe about yourself is true. Anything you put behind I am, that's what you are. So if you say I am broke, you're broke. If you say I'm a rock star, then you're a rock star. <laughs> if you say I can do this, then you can do that. If you say you can't, you can't. You might, who said that if you, if you can, if you believe you can, or you believe you can't, you're right. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So true I mean, though. Yeah. So there's a whole series on mindset and, and, and a lot of my lessons that I learned in the real estate industry, I share those because I, I want other agents to learn from my mistakes and my life lessons versus having to go through that themselves. Um, so there's a whole series on that. Then we, I teach mostly when I, so the, the social media side actually is almost like two different courses. Um, I teach the organic side of social media. I teach you how to generate leads organically, how to build your brand organically where people come to you versus you having to chase them down. Then inside the course, we also have what's called finesse, which will teach you how to run ads. So how to literally now take the platform that you built organically and run yep. very cost-effective ads because when you're running ads to your organic followers, your cost of doing business is very, very little. Now, I still to the day don't run ads for leads. I've never have, um, but we teach you inside, of course, how to do that. And, and my business partner, Sammy, he's one of the best digital marketers on the planet. Otherwise, he wouldn't be my business partner. And uh, he literally has a whole course, including our ad campaign. So word for word, all you need to do is click a button and it will yeah. add it to your ad Add your Facebook ad manager uh, profile and literally you can start running ads with um, ads that are proven to be working. So um, you can, we'll train you on the organic side if you want to do that. And we also train you on the ad side if you want to do that and throw some money at it, or maybe you'll meet yourself in the middle and do both. You actually, in my opinion, you have to do both because you want to build out a very nice, good, solid base for your organic followers. And then your ads are costing you way less because they already opted in to follow you. Yeah, that's awesome. I like so it. that's on the uh, social media side. Then on the agent attraction side, that that um, came out, that course came out this year in February, I want to nice. say. So not too long and, ago. Yeah. So am I right? No. Must have been the end of the year. I think it was the end of the year. It's been a few months. Yeah. And so with that one, 
So when I decided to join EXP, the brokerage, I knew that I want to share the love and I want to share and help other people change their lives. So that's what I do. And I talk to anybody that wants to change their lives. So I do a lot of phone calls um, with agents and many of them decide to bring their business over to EXP. Now that's what we call now here Team GoGo. That put, I brought over 148 uh, agents personally, what we call our frontline. So personally sponsor them. I attracted them all. I don't call anyone, they call me. So the course is built on pretty much the basis of how to do agent attraction, not agent recruiting. Yep. And it's not an EXP training. It is for any broker out there or any team leader out there that is growing their own teams or brokerages and want to learn how to do it with the power of social media and how to attract agents to their own teams and brokerages. And um, I want to say it's over 100 videos and we are constantly adding on. Awesome. It's anywhere from the moment that they get familiar with your brand all the way through the onboarding process. And then really your work starts because now we are talking retention. Now your work starts after they join and what all, all the things that you can do or need to do in order to make them stay, not make them stay, but if they don't see the value, uh, you, you have the chance of losing them. So right. it's pretty much anything from the moment they get introduced to you all the way down of how you are going to keep them, all the weekly trainings, all of the Zapier integrations, all of the websites, the systems, the click funnels, the videos, the you name it, it's in there. I like it. I like it. What is your uh, your latest uh, platform you decided to try out, or you guys are new? New you guys are trying out because I said you said Zapier, so I'm guessing you probably have lots of different platforms you're connecting. Oh gosh, yes, yes, we do. But I try to keep it very, very simple. Though I'm all systems, but simplified. Oh yeah. Uh, it's. I just posted a quote a couple of weeks ago. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> yeah. So I stand for I stand for KISS on a daily basis. I try to break things down of like, okay, hold on a minute. Why are we doing it this way? Does it do we really need to do this? Do we need to have this integration or this app or that thing? Um, so um, believe it or not, it's very simple, but in the same time, yeah, there's <laughs> maybe a lot it's of not stuff. that simple because <laughs> we have to come out with a program that's called uh, done for you. Yep. Um, DFY because the the course then it's built it, it's all the video series of everything why I do it and how I do it and yep. here's with the click of a button do the same well many of the agents just get overwhelmed or lost yep. or their ID and I they're like I want it but I'm not doing it who can I pay yep. kind of scenario so um, now we have a done for you program where they get the whole course but then we also build it for them yeah so to me it seems very simple to an everyday agent maybe not so much um, so we will meet you then if, if you can't do it yourself, then we'll meet you and we'll build it out for you. But the major ones that we use are, I want to say it's my website, which everybody can check out. It's gogobetki.com. So my name.com. Um, you can check it out if you like it on the very bottom of every page on that website. There's a button I want to cite just like this. Um, the business that I partner with, they will build your site for $20 and maintain it for $20 a month. So you can. That's awesome. Do it. Yeah, um, that's awesome. And it's fully customizable. Your page can look like mine or nothing like mine. It's totally up to you. That's um, awesome. They do an amazing job and they're the most cost effective way. It is built off of ClickFunnels, but they do all the work for you. You don't have to build it yourself. Um, nice. So that's one of the things that we teach in there. Um, I believe that you need to have one hub where everything that you do is on there. So on my gogobetki.com, you will see me on the buy side. You see me on the listing side. You see all of my podcasts. You see the events that I attend. You can partner with me at EXP. You see all of my affiliate links for any product that I support and um, uh, recommend. Um, so pretty much everything that GoGoBetki does as a human, it's on there. And um, so that's one of the things. And we, we explain why you need to have all of the different videos that we have in there. What, yep. what are the links? You know, what are the sign up links? So we talk about Google drives and, you know, everything I do is automated and everything we do uh, sends me a notification. I like to be in the know. So that's where Zapier comes in. Yep. Um, like our Google drive document gets filled out. I get a text message notification from Zapier. Hey, so and so just filled out this pink sheet. Um, pretty much, I mean, I could continue on. We use Trello um, to track our, our large team. Like when you're tracking 600 agents, it, it gets complicated. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and we get different. I'm sure you have something like that with your nationwide team of how you track everybody and their production and who's iconing and who's capping and who's not and who's the, the, the growing their team. And, you know, yep. there's a lot of things that we track, a lot of things that we celebrate um, that it comes with Facebook groups. So we teach you how to have your Facebook groups. Then we do a lot of events and we'll teach agents how to do their events and why they're doing the events. Um, then we talk about links because I do a lot of things on Instagram, for example, that only allows you to have one link. So then we talk about, okay, build out your card site or yep. build a link before free. So I always give paid version and free version for everything that I do. 
for all oh, of yeah. our students so they can decide how they want to do it. If they can afford the $20 a month or whatever that service might be costing a month, then there is a free version for that as well. So um, those are the major ones I want to say that we use. So it's 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 Trello, it's Zapier, it's websites, it's Facebook groups, it's uh, all social media platforms, it's Google Drive. Um, yeah. That's awesome. And, I like it. <laughs> I like it. So let's change it up a little bit. So let's say yeah. you had to start all over today and you only had $1,000. How would you spend that first $1,000? Oh, it reminds me of the billionaire, undercover billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> How would I do that? I would probably start a Facebook business page and throw $1,000 at ads. Sweet. I thought you were going to say, hey, buy my course. I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, I would, I mean, please buy my course because I can, <laughs> my course sucks. <laughs> but if you asked me if I could go back, I didn't have my course. I couldn't oh, buy no, a course true. then. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, definitely buy my course. But here's the thing. If my course sucks, if it sucks, if it's the shittiest course you ever spent $1,500 on, what's your average commission? 7,000, 9,000, one measly deal will pay for the course three times over. And that's if my <laughs> course sucks. Yeah. And for the rest of your career, it will pay for itself over and over and over and over again. That's but awesome. what I would do if I could go back in time, uh, one of the lessons that I took me the longest to learn is that it takes money to make money. And I'm still fighting that lesson because like what I built, I built it organically. Yep. So it's in my blood, it's in my core being that I yeah. don't want to spend money. But to speed up the process of my growth, I would go back, start a Facebook business page and start running ads. That's awesome. I like it. I like it. Is there uh, um, any business books that you might recommend that you kind of have that kind of stuck with you along the way that really helped you out? Oh, gosh, I read so many. I believe <laughs> that you are um, you pretty much get paid for the hour what you bring to the hour. The dumber you are, the less money you make. The smarter you are, the more money you make. <laughs> So I read, I read a lot of books. I, I watch a lot of documentaries. Biographies are my favorite. I love to learn from other people's mistakes. Yep. Um, one of the book, though, that it was life changing for me is uh, The Greatest Salesman in the World. Nice. By OG something, something original yeah. gangster. Something. Can't remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's The Greatest Salesman in the World. And it's a tiny little pocket book. By the way, all of the books that I read, maybe not all of them, but many of the books that I read is in my Amazon link. So all you need to do is go to my Instagram profile, li- click the link, go to links, and in my Amazon store, go to books. Sweet. And uh, you'll find all of the books that I read and recommend. But The Greatest Salesman in the World is life-changing for me. Awesome. I love it. That's awesome. Is there uh, um, well, how can they... I'm reading uh, another one right now that's amazing. Um, it, do you know Napoleon Hill? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Think and Grow Rich. Yep. yep. So he wrote a second book that's called Outwitting the Devil. Hmm. I haven't read that's that one. Been, have you heard of that one? I haven't. Oh, I haven't, yeah. So good. So he wrote Think and Grow Rich in the 30s. Then he wrote uh, Outwitting the Devil in the 40s. Hmm. And during his lifetime, they told him that it's too controversial and nobody will publish it. And he will go out of business if he does. And then when he passed away, he left it to his wife. They told her the same thing. So she never published it. When she passed away, they left it to the Napoleon Hill Foundation. They never published it until 2018. So seven wow. some odd years later. It is amazing. It is so good. And I have to read it out loud to myself. He literally interviews the devil and the devil answers all of his questions. And it's mind blowing. In some of the cases, the devil says, he asks the questions and says, is this true? And he says, it's true, but it's not right. I mean, it's like, it is, it is my, it is one of the best books I have read. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Yeah, That's awesome. I haven't awesome. heard of that one yet. We'll have to check it out. Yeah. Awesome. So um, before we go, how can people get a hold of you and uh, find your, uh, your courses? So um, gogoesbootcamp.com is the social media course. Um, gogoesbootcamp.com forward slash AA kind of hide the agent attraction course because it's application only. Um, so you have to go to an application process and all that, but go with bootcamp.com and then forward slash AA for the agent attraction. Um, to get me personally is Instagram only. Go goes real estate on Instagram and every other platform I have virtual assistants. You can still get to me, but through a virtual assistant. Um, and that's pretty much it. Sweet. Awesome. Hey, thanks for coming on and sharing your story with us today. Thank you so much for having me. That's so exciting. And then I will have you guys in um, in one of our weekly team Google meetings. I have Mariana reach back out. Sweet. Okay. Sounds awesome. like a plan. Are these working? All right. Here we go. Oh, there we go. I think they're working. Should we tell them? Uh, Mine keeps falling. It doesn't do we, like my voice. What do we got to tell them? Subscribe. Subscribe. 
What do we do? We got a point out. Hey, I think there's a subscription button. Like it might be, it might be there. It might be right there too. Somewhere. Somewhere. Find it. It's red. Yeah. It's and red. it's blue. It's green. I don't really know. It's, it's a color. This mic isn't even attached. Did you plug these in? Well, I guess. Uh, I wonder if they can hear us. Yeah. I wonder if they hear us. Well, we should probably tell them if, if they can hear us. We should probably tell them also give us a five star review for listening to on Apple. That'd be cool. Five, five star stars, review. guys. Share it with everybody they can think of. We won't but, take four stars. I mean, I don't even think these are on. I mean, this no, is, I don't think this is working. This is not working. Yeah.